Hello friends, here is an old Ruby on Rails application that I built, and here is the list of users. And as you can judge by these email addresses, they all look fake. This could be real people trying to sign into the application with fake data and try to have a look around, or this could be actual bots that were spamming the registration page, trying to just create a lot of uh, necessary data in the application. Usually when you have email and password log in into your application, you would want to guard from bots uh, who are trying to spam your application with creating lots of fake users, and especially you should guard the login page from bots that are making thousands of requests, trying to guess an email and password combination and trying to log into somebody's account. Historically, I always used the gem rec attack to guard from uh, bots trying to spam the login and uh, sign up page in the application. But as of Rails 7.2, Rails has its own native rate limiting feature. So you can add rate limiting without having uh, any gem dependencies like rack attack. And uh, Rails 7.2 has been released just a couple of days ago, so you can use this rate limiting out of the box. And you see it is added on a controller action level. So here in the sessions, basically in the login page, it says that you can have maximum, maximum 10 uh, login uh, requests within three minutes from the same IP address. If you have more, then you're going to get uh, an error and you will not be able to uh, submit the request. Uh, for the first time, I actually saw this being used in the, the Rails native authentication generator. Here is the code. When you generate the sessions controller, it adds rate limiting line by default. So let's try to add this kind of uh, native Rails 7 uh, rate limiting into an application that uses device. And here is a basic application that has a home page, a dashboard that requires authentication, login, and uh, sign up pages. And we're going to try to add the rate limiting to login and register so that there cannot be too many requests within a period of time from the same IP, otherwise there should be an error. So, uh, looking at the example here, it is added on a controller level. And uh, we don't actually have uh, device controllers by default when we create a device uh, uh, generator in the application. So we'll need to add the device controllers for sessions and registrations. So I'm going to say Rails generate device uh, um, controllers, users, so for users, and the controllers are uh, registrations and sessions. Okay, so it created the uh, two controllers and uh, I will go to my roots and uh, I will say device for users, controllers, sessions and registrations. Okay, so opening these controllers, I'm going to add this rate limit to, let's say 10 within three minutes only on create to the sessions, so to the login page. Let's add rate limiting and let's start the server. And uh, you see, going to the login page, I get this no method error and define method rate limit. Why is it so? Because going to the jump file, I'm actually not running Rails 7.2, I'm re running Rails 7.1. So I will say Rails 7.2.0 and run bundle. Okay, I will start the Rails server once again. And I will say, for the sake of example, I will limit it to two requests within uh, three minutes. So let me open the console also. Login, 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 and you see, uh, I don't seem to be getting any errors. Why is it so? Because uh, it, you, it should be using the Rails cache, but uh, Rails cache is disabled by default in development. So we need to run the command Rails dev cache to enable caching in the development environment. Uh, let me run it again. So it is no longer been cached. Now it is been cached. Okay, let's run the Rails server. Now I will click login. Login again. And you see, now I get this error, too many requests. So if I refresh the page, I click login, and you see there is no request submitted, no errors have been rendered, and in the console I see this completed with too many requests. So I'm not actually submitting the form. So it's really nice. Uh, the form isn't been submitted because we are defending it with uh, the straight limiting. 
but uh, we want to maybe give the user some uh, input about uh, what is happening. So we would want to like redirect the user and say that uh, try again later as it happens in this example uh, in the Rails sessions controller generator. So let's go to this line and we will say limit to 10 within three minutes, only create and redirect uh, to in device we don't have this uh, new session URL, we have the new user session path. Okay, let's uh, try once again. I will click on login a few times and you see now I get this try again later flash message. So it works uh, quite well. And we can add the same way in our registrations controller. So here, I will add the uh, rate limit to 10 within three minutes as uh, it is done in the rail sessions gen generator. Maybe it is like a good uh, combination of uh, uh, attempts per interval of time. So let's add it to our registrations and uh, I'm going to click sign up multiple times. And you see, I get this try again later. But again, I was redirected to the login page. So in the registrations controller, I want to be redirected back to the register page. So here I will say in new user registrations path. And that is more or less it. Having a look at the docs of the straight limiting, you can uh, set different stores. You can store it in Redis. You can store it in the Rails cache. And by default, it responds with had too many requests. And it responds based on the remote IP address. So on the IP address of the person who is trying to make the request, uh, we don't have to specify this code uh, here. So in this scenario, like this is uh, what would happen by default, but we don't need to specify it. So yeah, that's basically it. This is how you can add the uh, Rails native rate limiting to device, uh, to the sign in page and to the sign up pages. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.